Hey, kids, this is CJ Ramon of the World Famous Ramones, and you're watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. I think you have the power to bring driving to you with this segment's entitled Take Down Rock. You know, funny. <laughs> it's, it's funny, you know, it's a good story, it's funny, you're a funny guy. <laughs> well, I mean, the way I talk, but it's just, you know, it's, you're just funny, it's, it's funny, you know, the way you tell the story and everything. I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you? Are you kidding me with that question? I mean, look at me, I don't even know how I got here. Oh no, you said it. How do I know? You said I'm funny. How the fuck am I funny? What the fuck? so funny about me. I really don't know what's going on with you right now. All I said is, do you want the funny burger? Now, is anybody around here going to order? If not, could you take me back to the drive-thru? I got a lot of people waiting on me. Hey, what the hell is this? I asked for a Kenobi, not a Twinkie. Yo, Tommy, home team test. Drive-thru's closed. Coming up next, CJ Vermont. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking so my guest tonight is a vocalist guitarist and he was a member of the legendary punk rock group The Ramones. Let's take a look at the clip. So please welcome to the show, CJ Ramones. Doing all right, doing all right. Can't pleasure, complain. pleasure. Yeah, of course, man. I'm liking the beard, man. I don't know if I can pull that off. I'm getting a little <laughs> trimmy side. You know, yeah. But, my my wife uh b breaks my chops about the beard, but it's either the hair beard or the meat beard. You know, I got like six chins under there now, so. <laughs> so, uh, so it depends on how many drinks she has. Like, you know what, baby? I, I can do the chin. You know, the event, the advantage of the chins, baby, is that if we need to hide something. I'll just like lift it up, stick it under there, and cover it up. Nobody yeah. even know. And then just yep. pop it right out. Yeah, <laughs> that's great, man. That's great. But first of all, man, congratulations um, on being a part of such an iconic band. I know you came into the band uh, later in the yeah. group to replace, but you yeah. lasted with them for a majority of their successful career. Just to get into it a little bit, yeah. how was it to perform in a band? And I said the same thing to Scott Page from Pink Floyd last week. To perform with a band and be a part of an iconic group that could sell out a stadium like that. How was the feeling behind that? When you know you're going on sale and you're like, um, hey guys, you know, we just sold out in like uh, 15 minutes. You're like, yeah. what? How was the feeling behind that? So the, uh, you know, the, the, you're from New York. So, you know, like growing up, like the Ramones were, you know, if you lived in New York, the Ramones were like our team, you know, it's the Ramones and the Yankees. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I idolize them. So go, you know, going to the audition and, and getting the gig and, and getting a step on stage with them. I mean, it, it, there's really, it, it's not an easy thing to explain. So the way I explain it to everybody is I always just tell them, imagine you had the opportunity to play with a band that you grew up idolizing, like whatever your favorite band was as a kid, imagine you grew up and, and you actually got to play in that band. That's that's the only way I can explain it because to stand on stage and look over and see Joey and Johnny <laughs> to my right every night, it was just bizarre. You know, it was really bizarre. But I, I loved every second of it. Um, and, you know, I got to see the world and, you know, I mean, I, I grew up on Long Island, you know what I mean? And I thought I would see the world with the military. You know, my, yeah. I, thought that, I thought my <laughs> shot at seeing the world was like seeing it with a rifle on my back. But yeah. um, but I, uh, I I got to live the dream. I totally got to live the dream. And, um, you know, post Ramones, being able to get out on the road and kind of keep the Ramones legacy alive and put out my own mm -hmm. solo records. And now I play with a great band called Me First and the Gimme Gimmies with a bunch of other yeah. famous dudes and stuff. So, I mean, it, it, it really was, it, it changed my life in a way that nothing else could have. Oh, I can imagine. Now, you guys are originally from Forest Hills, the groups, but... Yeah, I'm from Queens originally, Howard Beach, but I grew up in East Meadow, Long Island. So where did you grow up in Long Island? I, I'm originally from Hollis. Hollis, so, Queens? Okay. Yeah, that's Home that's, Man, that's, well, okay, run DMC. All yeah, right. Yeah, I was born at Terrace Heights Hospital in Hollis, Queens. Um, but uh, that's where I was born. I spent the first couple years of my life, um, and but I grew up in Deer Park, Long Island. So like Babylon, Babylon yep. area, you know, mm -hmm. Um 
And of course, you know, Long Island, great place to grow up, you know, still kind of small townish back then in the late sixties, early seventies and beaches and fishing. And, you know, it's just an awesome spot to grow up. Uh, of course. I mean, uh, I love Long Island as well, but I don't know. I don't know if I can go back there now. I'm such a city boy. And <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's something about New York City and Queens, Queens, Brooklyn, Bronx. Yeah. When you're in this type of industry, music, acting, whatever, Long Island does not give you the grind that the city gives you because yeah. there's a certain essence about it. It's like when you go out to L.A., I don't think L.A. is as hard. Yeah. As in New York, I think New York's a little more harder when it comes to a grind. But when you're in these some these areas, man, you're just walking around people. It's so quick. You could see everybody has a purpose. Yeah. And I just wanted to be in that purpose. Do you have that same energy when you come to the city? Yeah. You know, that's the uh, – New York has an energy – I mean, no other city has. When I first got into the Ramones, right, I was so excited, like, because I hadn't traveled before. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get to see Dallas and Chicago and Detroit and L.A. and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll get to go to London and Paris and, and you know, Prague and, and Barcelona. Like, I, I had all these cities in my mind I was so excited to see. And I when I got to most of those places, I, I realized why New York City is – is the capital of the world. Like I realize mm -hmm. why New York city is really considered to be like the center of the world. You know, um, New York city has an energy that is just unlike anywhere else. Um, the amount of skyscrapers, the city skyline, um, the subways, the, it, it's so different from everywhere else you go. And that mm -hmm. is, um, you know, and, and we really owe that all, we really owe that all to, you know, uh, the whole, um, you know, New York City is basically built by all immigrants, right? It's where, it's where yeah. everything started. It was all the people from all these other countries that wanted more. They wanted yeah. freedom. They wanted a better life. So when they came to New York, people got down to it. There was no messing around. When you came to New York, you had to be serious. You walked, you went down to the pier or you walked onto a job site and you you just walked onto a site and said, hey, I need a job. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. how that's why New York has that energy. It's all about getting the job done. But people who work hard like to play hard, too. So, you know, New York is known for its nightlife, right? We got so many clubs and just everything going on. We got concerts in Central Park. And, um, it, it, and I really believe that's what makes New York City so unique. I really do. I think it's just the people who came, the original immigrants who came to New York, came to New York, New York to get busy, to give their families a better life, to work hard, you know, the American dream. That's what they came here for. And that, that's never left New York City. It just never left. That's what gives the city its character. Yeah, and I agree with you. If you have to look at my thing, I talk about it a lot. I actually am the creator of New York City's Times Square Peace Concert. And my whole speech is based around it's got nothing to do with skyscrapers or the food or you know, anything. It's about the people. The reason yeah. why it's called the melting pot is yeah. because when you stand in Times Square, everybody around me is from around the world in yeah. one place. Yeah. And it's so cool and so amazing. And, uh, I mean, what are your thoughts about that, that New York City right now is literally becoming the iconic capital of music this year? Like, they decided, let's explode with concerts. Like, we're literally throwing, besides Global Citizen, my concert, um, August 21st, you got a monster show coming out, Homecoming Week, with Bruce Springsteen, Jennifer yeah. Hudson, Carly Simon. Are you going to be in town for that? Because that's no. going to be a monster concert. I wish. I, uh, um, I'll i actually be rehearsing at that point for... Um for a tour through the U.S. Uh, the, uh, me first and the Gimme Gimme's were about to go out and do a U.S. tour uh, September 8th through October 23rd. So I'll be in rehearsals. But, um, yeah, you know, I think because of, you know, the how everything was uh, – live music was shut down for so long. I mean, as soon as there was a break, um, people started getting vaccinated – you know, everyone was kind of, has gotten kind of used to the mask thing and everything. I think now the entertainment industry is ready to kind of like 
come back and say, hey, look, you know, it's been a long, hard road, but it's time for us to get back together and do some of the things we love to do, things that we like to get together and do, you know what I mean? And however you, you know, however you're comfortable with how, how that happens, um, vaccination, masks, all that stuff. I mean, to me, that's, you know, that's all, that's all on the individual. But I think the industry itself is, it, it knows that it's time to try to get people back together. Yeah, you know I mean, you got to get you got to give people a little bit of a of a break from what's been, you know, at this point, it's like 18 months of of isolation. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I think I'm I really I'm hoping the timing is good. I'm, I'm really hoping the timing is good. Yeah, me too. And I'll be honest with you. A lot of people want to admit this. I was kind of getting used and I was kind of cool with the isolation for a little while. There was something yeah. about waking up and being like, damn. I can actually watch the whole week of Vampire Diaries, and I don't have to call out sick. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, awesome. <laughs> I, I came off the road in 2019. I was 250 pounds. I was on a whole bunch of different type of medications. Um, I was really busted up from the road. I had been on the road for 30 years by, at when 2019 rolled around and um so i retired from touring as cj ramon i just retired mm -hmm. from touring as cj ramon my health was so bad that i just felt like i couldn't go on anymore and then the lockdown happened right in yeah. the beginning of 2020 i immediately recognized it um, I, I, I saw an opportunity for myself to kind of turn myself around. I saw it with the help of, a, 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 of a good friend of mine, um, my buddy Mick, who, um, who, uh, kind of got me on the right road, um, helped me out with adjusting my diet, um, gave me an exercise plan and stuff. I actually lost, I've lost 30 pounds. Um, I'm off of almost all my medications, I'm healthier than I've been in years. I'm like, I'm literally healthier than I've been in years. Um, and I enjoyed not just, you know, taking care of myself, but I got to spend uninterrupted time with my wife and my children for the mm -hmm. first time. And in, in, for the first time since my babies were born, I've never had this much time with my kids. And, and so to a certain extent, and the financial thing hurts, you know what I mean? If you work, oh, yeah. in the music, if you work in the music business where everyone's hurting and that this, this, from the local crews that work in the clubs and the stadiums to the sound men, you know, to the bands, to, to the management and the booking companies and the promoters and the clubs themselves. And I mean, everyone's really hurting. And that part of it, it that part of it really sucked. But I, I realized like, this really is an opportunity for me to do a little bit of internal work and to, and to spend time with my family. And uh, I'm really glad that I did it the way that I did it because uh, I mean, I know a lot of people who struggled a lot harder than I do. And they, you know, they ended up putting on weight and drinking too much or partying too much. You know what I mean? Just because, you know, without a job, without the ability to go out and socialize and everything else, that really puts the zap on your head. You know what I mean? It really does. But, um, mm -hmm. but in the last couple of months, I mean, I already see it. A lot of my, a lot of my friends from, from the, the music community are really, they're all biting, <laughs> chomping at the bit to get out there again. So, um, so yeah, the, so that, you know, this summer is, is well, the summer into fall, um, looks like it, it might be a, a rebound for us. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I'm hoping it is too, and we'll get into it in a minute. You touched on something which I like what you were saying uh, about everybody struggling. And I think one of the reasons why weight gain and depression was there is because when you do lose your job and you're collecting unemployment, which is cool, right? And yeah. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they extended the unemployment, added more checks. I don't understand why it took five months to re-decide on the new one, which is the dumbest thing in the world. It's like, if your people need money, who are yeah. the voters that put you in office to make $250,000, you yeah. don't wait five months. You'd be like, Listen, this thing's going to go for another 10 months. All right, yeah. let's sign the thing and get it out. Because what they didn't realize is you waited five months after the deadline was already over, and half the people were either broke, homeless, unemployed, which 
that boggles my mind. How can yeah. we think about sitting there? We, Republican or not, it's human yeah. beings. Got to do a parties. But yep. when it came to the money, I think the main reason why people were gaining weight and depressed because when you're not doing anything, the gyms are closed and you're lying down all the time. Mentally, it's easier for you to go out and get McDonald's ice cream because your mentality yep. is, oh, I'll burn it off in eight months. Then on the other side is, when you're trying to be frugal with money, you're not going out and getting lobster. Yeah. You're not going out to dinner. All the restaurants are closed. Yeah. So you're going to the takeout places. You're going to this, the fast food. And yeah. four months later, before you know it, CJ Ramon's got five chins and his wife's like, <laughs> it's time to grow the ZT top beard. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> you can't do this. Yeah. Like, come on. But, um... Yeah, dude, it, it's, I'm glad you were talking about the music industry. I'm so glad it's coming back. Now, let's keep an open mind, all right, about the vaccine. Yeah. Um, when it comes to music, I tell a lot of the hip-hop guys and everything, like, listen, everybody's got these theories, right? But let me put it to you this way. You're not mandated to take the vaccine. However, they're going to put rules in place that are going to affect your income. Right. And that's a choice you're going to have to make because – I'm an event producer, right? Yeah. You're a legend. You're a celebrity. So when you go to these things, the first thing you want to know is, are you vaccinated? And if you're not, you're not going to make the money that you think you're going to make because they'll cut you out and go to somebody else. Like, yeah. do you agree with that? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's just how it's going to be. That's, I, uh, there's just no way around it. Uh, my, my view on the vaccine is this. It, I got it because, um, yep. I got it because yeah. I I got a wife and I have children and my biggest fear was I'd go out somewhere and pick it up and come back home and give it to one of my, my wife or one of my babies. And, and uh, I know there's a lot of people, the, the anti-vaxxer crowd is really big. I have a lot of friends who are, but yeah, me too. I, I'll tell you why I got the vaccination. After I learned that it, the, the vaccination is, um, it works the way most of the other vaccines work that we've gotten in the past. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a cure. It's not a cure. Yep. Let's throw that out there. It wasn't a cure. Yep. It was like the flu. So if you get sick, you have antibodies that can fight it. But right. there are some people that have low immune systems where it affects them differently. So yep. I want to interrupt and throw it out there because there are a lot of bad rumors out there that people are spreading that yep. are not true. It wasn't yeah. a cure. So yeah. keep going. Apologies. So the uh, so you know the 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 fact that it works like every other vaccine works. Uh, I mean that really kind of put it to bed for me because in the beginning there was all this stuff. It was going to change your DNA, and there was a lot of crazy rumors out. So I just kind of waited till everything calmed down a little bit, and the real facts came out, and it, mm -hmm. and they they explained exactly how it worked and everything else. And once I learned that it works just like every other vaccine works. I, I, I agreed to get it. I understand like some people are um, are concerned because there's no long-term studies. And that is a right. legitimate concern. That's totally That's legit. It. It's a totally That's legitimate that. concern. But I had to weigh that against the, you know, the, the what I just talked about with, you know, I have a wife and three kids. You know what I mean? Uh, I just, I made the decision, not what was best or safest for me, but what I th thought would be best or safest for my family. And that's how I went about it. And I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate mail for for it and everything else, but that's why I did it. And I, I feel like, you know, I, I did, you know, I did due diligence and researching it and making sure it wasn't anything crazy. Um, and, and my, my daughter will get it um, on her 12th birthday too, my youngest one. So, um. So that's where I'm at on it. And, uh, but I have to say, you know, to, to try to force people to get it, you're, they're right. really, I mean, they're, they're really asking for trouble by doing that because there yeah. is a lot of people now who, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people are bucking it because they're being told you have to, you know what that's I mean? Right. And that's the first, if you want to get somebody to not do something, you tell them they that's have right. to do it. And then they're going to tell you, I ain't doing it. You know, you can't right. make me do it. And I, and I get that, you know, that, that argument that, you know, the government should not be able to tell you that you have to get something. So the way they're going to try to get around it now is they're not going to tell you, you have to get it. However, like at your job, what they'll do is 
is you don't have to get the vaccination, but you're going to have to get tested every two days. So every two days you're going to work, somebody's going to take a swab and stick it up your nose. You know what I mean? So, and that's how it's going to go. So now they're not forcing you to get it, but now you're, now you're forced to have to get tested every two days. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's a personal decision, you know, in my book, it's a personal decision. My, uh, um, you know, my, my decision, I, you know, I, I just, I came to it in the same way I come to every other decision I make that affects my family is, you know, uh, you know, just try to get the facts as best I can and, and make my decision accordingly. But, you know, I just wish this crap would be over with. <laughs> I just yeah, wish it would be over with. You know, I wish it, I wish we could just get rid of it totally. But I mean, look, we got rid of polio. Pretty much, you know what I mean? Polio's almost wiped out. A lot of stuff that used to be, you know, used to haunt us come back every couple of years and everything else we've gotten rid of through vaccines. So I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be able to at least control this one to a, a, a yeah. to a, a extent enough that we can all get back to normal. I think in a couple of years they'll have it, maybe less. I think, you know, they're working on the long term, like you said. And I like the way you answered it, right? And you should never get any hate mail because if people really listen to what you just said, you're not knocking anybody's decision. You're very open and you understand everybody's ideals and there's a lot of reasons why people don't know. I have a lot of friends that don't do it. And it's not going to make me like them less at all. Yeah. You know, everybody has a choice. And I was, I was talking to one of my select friends and I said, he thought it was a weird analogy, but I was trying to explain it to him. I go, listen, we're at the point right now in the world where if C.J. Ramon likes chocolate ice cream and I like vanilla, people are not hanging out with each other anymore yeah. because they're into different flavors, right? Yeah. And he's like, well, that's a weird analogy. We're talking about COVID. I'm like, yeah, but really think about what I just said. It, this is where we are right now because this whole world has been segregated, separated since the dawn of Christ, pretty yeah. much, you know? So it's like um, my attitude is always... Respect people's decisions, right? Yeah. You know, they have their own lives. Those are your boys. Those are your families. If they don't yeah. want to get the vaccine, that's fine. However, yeah, you might have a thing where if you have a family gathering, you got kids, and you know your brother didn't get the shot, yeah. he or she, sister, have to possibly understand why your brother can't have you over. And it's not that he doesn't want you there. He loves you. He wants yeah. you there. But he also has kids. So I yeah. need people to understand that. and. Don't hit on each other because of a choice. The other, know, and, the other thing about it too is exactly what you said. It's not a cure. It doesn't make you. It doesn't make you immune. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, well, you know, you can you get vaccinated. You can still be carrying it around. You can still be. Right. Uh, you know, you could still be walking around having it and spreading it. You know what I mean? So it's not. Uh, you know, it's it's not one hundred percent. But right now, it's the only thing that we have. It's the only thing yep. that we have, you know, that and masks. And that's, you know, I don't know if it, maybe there's some kind of cycle that this thing has to run until um, it's uh, the, you know, the, um, the, the rate at which it spreads or how contagious it is will start to decrease over a long enough period of time. I don't know. I don't know that, that type of stuff, but um until you know until they come up with more information on that what the natural cycle for this thing is going to be the only thing we can do is get vaccinated and if you choose yeah. not to you choose not to you know what i mean yeah. it's it's your choice you know what i mean it's exactly. and that's uh, th- and that but that's something that i think not everybody feels that way I, I i know there's a lot of people who feel like everybody should just be made to get it but that is go- totally goes against you know that that goes against in my opinion, goes against everything that we're supposed to be uh, representing yeah. in our country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Everything has to be a choice. I mean, when they say bananas are good for you, how do you, you know, 10 years from now, somebody's going to find out they're not. So the attitude with me is the only reason why these rules are really being implemented now is, again, they're not forcing you to do it. However, what they're finding is, and I see it all the time at events, they said you can take your mask off if you've been vaccinated. That was made very clear. Yeah. What they're finding is a lot of people are lying without lying verbally, meaning they're walking around with no mask. They're hugging yeah. on people. They're actually letting people assume they are vaccinated. And some would even say they are when they're not. And yeah. what they're finding is people that are exaggerating the truth are the ones that are, are giving, you know, 
So they decide, all right, if this is what's going to happen, we need to implement something. And that's where we're at right now. And listen, we're all human. Let's all just look out for each other at the end of the day. It doesn't matter yep. your race or creed. Like CJ can get cancer. I can get cancer, AIDS, whatever. We're all immune yep. to the same thing. The only thing we can do right now is just look out for each other. Yeah. Because if you, inside and out, we all bleed red. We all got lungs, hearts, the whole thing. And that's yep. the way I look at it. Now, speaking of um, other weird things, like, What's this thing about UFOs you're talking about? Like, <laughs> what is this, man? I see this thing. He's like, let's talk about UFOs. I'm like, oh, man, I got one of these. I'm like, listen, I'm watching Supergirl <laughs> right now. I've been watching, no. I'm, on, I'm on episode four on Supergirl, and I'm like, this guy wants to talk about UFOs. I'm like, you know what? Bring it on, man. Bring it on, because I got my cape. Let's do this. I, um, uh... I actually have all, I've always been interested in UFOs since I was a kid. I've always just, I I don't know why I was always just really attracted to it. Um, but there's been so much new stuff that came up in the last two, three years, um, new things. And it's just funny now that I don't, nobody really acknowledged it, but basically the U S government has acknowledged that, yeah, we're being visited by, they don't know if it's people from out of space or, 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 or people from, you know, like our survivor colony of humans or something that live in under the ocean. Like there's all these crazy theories now and all this new information coming out. But I'm, I'm re to me, that's like such a huge thing. Like since I was a kid, I sure. always believed in it. And now the U S government has basically said, you know, um, uh, yeah, you know, there are, vehicles from somewhere else that are um that are visiting us here and it uh, and i'm waiting for like this some kind of big event for somebody you know to acknowledge it and go holy cow can you believe it finally so um but yeah i'm like i i i was today i was binge listening to um uh joe rogan i listen to joe rogan's podcast a lot um a couple of different um guests that he had on uh on the subject um uh, yeah, he has I, my good friend on uh, Matt Sarah, who's one of my childhood friends from East Meadow. Yeah, yeah, Matt, sure. My tough, boy, man. Yeah. Tough dude, man. Um, but uh yeah, so it's been um it's been it's just been kind of funny to see, you know, to see, you know, in my lifetime of people um talking about UFOs being, you know, being laughed at and disregarded and you know but uh, all the cover-up stuff and everything to suddenly, you know, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, okay, we're being visited. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I was just excited to hear that. But I, I, I put it down on the list of things to talk about strictly as a joke, you know, just like no, I, I'm, I, I'm willing to talk about anything. I don't care. Yeah, man, listen, interviews should not be, hey, let's talk about the past and the same damn questions you've been hearing for the past 30 years. Yeah. Interviews are about getting to know the person. It's about a conversation. It's about seeing what they're doing now. And let me keep it real with UFOs. I'm not saying I don't believe in them. What I do say is this. You have to be very ignorant to say that we are the only planet that people are living on throughout this universe. Because yeah. that doesn't even make sense at all. Yeah. Yeah. At all. So you have, even if you've never seen it or whatever, blah, 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 there is form of life on other places that we probably never touched on. Yeah. So you're just thinking we're the only that's kind of like that doesn't even make sense. Like why would we be the only planet with, you know, people on it? And my thing is that I hope UFOs come because if they got some extraterrestrial stuff going on, I'm gonna step to an alien and be like, Listen, bro, tell me what the lotto numbers are for next Wednesday and I'll hook you up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come yeah. on, baby. Yeah. Fill out my ticket. Fill it out. <laughs> come on, man. I, I, I tell you, it's uh, it it was such an odd subject. Like the amount of people that I actually talked about it to was so small. Like there were only probably three or four people that I actually ever like told my views on it to over the years. Because most people, when you mention that, are just like they give you that that look, like oh like boy, you're crazy. here we go. Yeah, like yeah. oh here we go. You know what I mean? But um. <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, a very kind of vindicating moment when um, 
when you know when um, they released uh, they they actually released some videos uh, taken from a um, from a Navy fighter um, out over the ocean off the coast of San Diego. They had a couple videos um, of of these vehicles just doing unbelievable things that no we know. The Russians and the Chinese don't have and stuff. It was just the stuff is just so wild. And the the pilot, um, uh, his name is Fravor, um, who shot the video has actually been really open about it. The video was shot in two thousand and four, but but mm -hmm. uh, only was only released a couple of years ago. And um, that pilot has come out and done interviews, and he's just he's not like a big you know UFO guy, alien conspiracy guy, nothing. He's just like yeah. The, the the things that I saw these vehicles doing just unbelievable and it's so funny um uh they asked him you know what was your first thought when you saw it you know and I thought it was going to be some cowboy shit like oh I, I wanted to shoot it down or something like that and his first thought was uh I just immediately thought to myself like I'd love to fly that thing I was like well that's such a cool instant reaction to seeing something like that but yeah so that that was a big thing for me to be vindicated that, you know, the government now is even uh, is even uh, acknowledging uh, that we're being visited. So that's yeah, that, I, that's why you and Bose are on my list. <laughs> of course, man, <laughs> and I love it. I, listen, if we get invaded, I'm just gonna yell out free TVs for everyone. <laughs> so get it. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it. <laughs> free cable. This is great. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your new group for a minute because the sure. name is, is is really really cool. Uh, it's me first and the Gimme Gimme. All right, yeah. I kind of not have an idea about that. Uh, the way me first means like I'm looking out for me now and forget about the people who wants everything. Give me this, give me that. What's the plethora? What's the meaning behind that name? So so first off, the the uh, me first and the Gimme Gimme has been around a long time. Um, the band was originally formed by Fat Mike. Um, right. Um, uh, a couple of guys from Lagwagon, um, mm -hmm. Joey and Dave from Lagwagon, and then um, Chris Shiplett, who plays guitar for uh, the Foo Fighters now. Um, oh, over, wow. the, over the years, it kind of became a, a, a revolving lineup. Jay Bentley from Bad Religion played in there, and just like that's, that's who I actually got in just after. Um, but they've had kind of a revolving lineup over the years. And then um, a couple years back, they they got in touch with me and were like, Hey, you know, would you be interested in doing a few shows with us? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then when I announced my retirement in 2019, um, I just said, Hey, you know, if you guys need me, I'll be around. So, um, yeah. So I'm right now I'm the interim bass player. And, um, uh, so the, the band, we do all covers and it's covers from all the different eras, 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, we even do disco covers and, you know, 80s uh, pop covers and stuff, but we do a more punk rock style. Yeah, you know what? I know something cool. I'm seeing more and more celebrity bands uh, doing tributes to other celebrity yeah. artists. Um, yeah. I just, uh, who did I speak to? Oh, um, Scott Page, I mentioned before, Pink Floyd. He has a band called uh, Think Experience, where it's a combination of Fishbone and Jane's Addiction, and they wow. do. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you look into it, Think EXP, it's kind of like this virtual, it's got technology to it. So it's, um, what is it, Norwood Fisher from Fishbone, uh, right. Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction, Scott Page from Pink Floyd. Wow. Um, I believe uh, a couple of others once in a while. And now your band that I'm hearing, I'm loving it because it's not just a tribute band. I think it gets a lot more play when celebrities, are, it's kind of like an upscale version, but just take, don't take it this way. It's an upscale professional karaoke. Yeah. Um, celebrities showing love to other celebrities of music that they grew up on and love. Like God knows if I knew guitar, I would love to get up and rock a Jimi Hendrix song yeah. on stage in front of 30,000 <laughs> people. People would yeah. be like, you know, is that white boy with the non Afro. What's going on here? I'll be like, you know, just doing a whole nine. That yeah. that's really cool, man. I love it. Yeah, um, it's a lot of fun. And <laughs> and, and our uh, our singer Spike Lawson just incredible. I mean, he's such a great front man. He's really good. He's got you know 
not just big personality, but he's really funny on stage. He really comes up comes up with a, a lot of a lot of good stuff on the spot on stage. But we um uh but we're like I said before, we're getting ready to gear up there September eighth to October twenty third. We have a, a U.S. tour planned. Um, we're gonna have uh um. East Coast, West Coast, uh, bread basket. Would would doing the whole the whole country. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's been a while. I haven't uh, I did one live show uh, a couple months back. Um, I played at a kind of little underground skateboarding thing down in um, down in uh, uh, San Diego, oh. um, raising some money for uh, uh, veterans. And, um, but that would, other than that, I haven't done anything live since 2019, I think. Uh, that's very crazy. And I see you got a lot of fans here from Brazil, Argentina, Italy. Oh, yeah. I'm like, hey, come out and perform. And I just want to throw in there, like, guys, they'll be out there. But keep in mind that most European shows or international events are probably most likely aren't going to happen until at least mid spring of 2022 because. They literally just started opening up here, and because the Delta and everything is, is starting to spread across different, especially Tokyo, which I'm still boggled that they had the Olympics, yeah. um, which I wanted to ask you about. What was your thoughts that, obviously right now it's very hard to go international, but what did you think that they announced that they're going to do the Olympics, but on top of that, there were no fans? So it's like all these major people are taking a risk, and performing in front of no fans and the whole Olympics, it's really about the fans being there. That's pretty much the whole point. It's about the world coming together and supporting. What do you think about that when they were putting it on? So I think I think you really have to kind of um, consider the fact that you know we're coming up on two years, right? Yeah. Um, all the information that has come out. Um, the way it was disseminated, the way um, um, everybody from the WHO to, you know, to the, the U.S. government, you know, for us anyway, um, the way the information was disseminated was it, it just was really poorly done. Right. Yeah. They kept Great. hanging the carrot out there. Oh, you know, first it was three months and then it was three more months. And then suddenly everyone realized, like, holy crap it's going to be longer than that right once we got past the year um and the and the and the infection rate started going down things started to get better and everything else um i think that everyone was at the point where they were going to do whatever they wanted to do no matter what you know what i mean mm -hmm. so uh, you know when it comes to something like the olympics right they we still don't have enough information about this disease. We still don't no, even don't. know what's going on. We still don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? And the the Japanese government at that at that point had probably you know millions, if not billions, of dollars yeah. invested in putting the Olympics on. Right. Yeah. So now they're at a point where they waited it out they've done all the right things they've they've built the 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 you know the stadiums and they've um you know beefed up the infrastructure and done everything they possibly could and delay 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 and then it gets to the point where like what are we going to do what do right. we do do we just cancel it and, and let all and all these athletes that have been training through all of this bullshit and just you know uh, and just blow it out and say no we're not going to have it maybe we're going to have it next year well, last year they told us that we could do things this year. Now this year they're telling us, I mean, I know there's already there's already live shows and and stuff getting canceled now. Oh, I know. I, I'm sitting here in New York. I imagine by September, you know, I, I I'm not even I'm not confident that our US tour is going to happen. We're still moving ahead like it's going to happen, but there's a good chance that it won't. A, yeah, and just, you might have to skip cities too. That's the problem. You may right. go to New York and then have a dead zone for like a month before you yeah. go to Texas. You know, yeah. and, and you know what the weird thing is? We all want the Olympics to happen. The only problem that we all had is they were doing it in the one place where the vaccine was ninety nine percent not even there yet. So it's kind of like 
It's kind of like you're in Vietnam and you're just walking into a neighborhood where Agent Orange is, is like floating all over the place. Yeah. And it's like, why the hell are we walking in here when this is like a red zone right now? And yep. that's what the major flaw was that a lot of people were having a problem with. And yeah. I'll be honest with you, I probably would have agreed to if they postponed it because of the area that they were in. If it was a safer area, I would have been like, yeah, but even though they said not a lot of people got it, a lot of the doctors are saying, well, let's wait a month because we may hear a turnaround that a quarter of the people that were there now have it because some people don't show the symptoms right away. And uh, I think that's what they're worried about, which is uh, pretty crazy. So, um, so really where we're at is, uh, you know, things are going to be what they are. Yep. There's, there is no shiny day where everything's going to be perfect again. You know what I mean? There'll be no – it's not around the corner that everything's going to be great. We can all go out in public again. I don't think that day is coming anytime soon. I, I literally think it's like get vaccinated, right, and go out and, and, and you know, and understand that just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you can't get it. But if you do get it, you won't get as sick, right? Right. So if that's what it is – then I'm willing to go out and go do whatever I got to do. You know exactly. I mean? I'm willing to and get I'm out there and do if, – if I'm vaccinated, my family's vaccinated, and I have to go out on tour to make money, I'm willing to go out and do whatever I have to do to get out there and get things rolling again. And that's the point that most people are at. Most people are at like – you know, they're like, stop trying to control it. You ain't going to control it. It ain't going to be a, 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 you know, a, a big kumbaya moment where we can all hold, hold hands and say, hey, it's all over with. That day may not come. You know, we, this might be part of our lives for a very long time, for an extended period of time. And hopefully mm -hmm. what will happen is either um, you know, they'll figure this thing out and figure out a way to knock it out for good, or you'll get so many people that are vaccinated that it doesn't even matter anymore. That, that you know, anyone who doesn't want to vac get vaccinated doesn't get vaccinated. And if they're willing to take a chance doing that, then they're willing to take a chance doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I really think that's what we're coming to. They got to stop trying to control everything and lock everything down and just let it, they're going to have to let it go and let people do what they got to do to make, you know, to get their jobs done and to feed their families and everything else. Because, we just been we really been taking it on the chin for a long time, you know. Yeah, and I agree with you on that. Like like you said during the whole episode where you were home and you got to spend so much time with your family, which is yeah, it's definitely a blessing for that. And obviously, you appreciated being a father, being a husband during that time. What did you find yourself writing new music and uh, really contemplating in the brain about new stuff that you were coming out with for your solo album and all that? So, you know, a, a funny thing is, is I had planned on stopping in 2019, like I said, because of my health. Um, and I had always thought like at, you know, at, I would write an acoustic album at some point, right? Because that's how I write all my albums. I write on acoustic. I sit around and play acoustic a lot. And then when the lockdown happened, everybody came out with an acoustic album. Everyone came out with an acoustic album, you know? And so I, I just said, okay, I'll, I'll put that on the back burner and, and uh, maybe I'll release it down the road when this is all, all you know, when, when things, are, you know, kind of get moving again. But um, I, to tell you the truth, I really enjoyed being away from music. I, I, I enjoyed not performing. I enjoyed not, you know, feeling the pressure to write a record. I enjoyed um, uh, just kind of, you know, taking it day by day, you know, not, not having, uh, not having to, you know, think about the next tour coming up and everything. I really did enjoy it. But what I did do is I started reading a lot more books. I, mm -hmm. I went back. Um, my dad actually was, who was visiting here. I live in the East Bay of San Francisco now. My dad was out here, uh, visiting me from New York and actually got caught here in the lockdown. So he was with me for a year, which was great. It was most time I had spent with him probably since I was, you know, 12 years old. Um, That's cool. But we, uh, we, w w I went back through the catalog of Westerns, movies, and, and TV shows, and we just watched all the old Westerns, and 
you know, I, I really got back into movies and watching a lot of new stuff that I had never watched before. And, you know, I, I started watching TV series that I had never even heard of that, that had good subjects that I was interested in. So, you know, when, when you're an artist, right, you have to, you have to have experiences and you have to have some kind of creative input, some kind of, um, uh, material to channel into your own create, you know, your own creative process, your own work. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. a lot in the past, a lot of times, you know, I would get on my motorcycle and just take off for a couple of days and I would get all kinds of ideas for songs and stuff. Because once I'm out of my everyday life and mm -hmm. I'm not worrying about the phone ringing or, you know, trying to get in the bathroom or, you know, picking up my daughter sick from school. Once, once I get out of that world, all this stuff that's kind of been going through my head, all these, you know, creative thoughts and stuff kind of coalesce suddenly when I'm by myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I, I, you know, ideas start to form. And that's how I, that, you know, that's how I always write my best stuff, you know, is, is in, in, in those times when I'm completely alone and the everyday stuff is out of my head, you know. It's a lot easier to write in that um, type of environment. But during, you know, leading up to the lockdown, my last two records, I mean, I, I just – you know, I locked myself in a room with a pot of coffee and a bottle of Jack Daniels and coffee, caffeine and alcohol, you know what I mean? And I would sit down and, and I, it, I'd be able to kind of block everything out and then focus in on writing and, and things would just start to pop, 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 pop. And, the, you know, I always get good material that way too. But my, you know, my, my favorite way to write is to have that empty time where, where you know, I'm not pressured and there's nothing going on. And the, the lockdown really provided me with plenty of that. So I, I did end up with some good songs. I did end up with some good songs. Well, I'll tell you something, man, CJ. First of all, I think a lot of us are looking forward to seeing you tour again. Um, it's kind of weird for me to hear a musician retiring when the Rolling Stones are like 150 years old. <laughs> About to put on a major tour, you know. Hey. I'm, I'm I'm waiting for all of them to be rolled out on like you know gurneys, and they all got vials in their arms. Like, oh, we're ready to rock, yo! Can you push up the gurney so I could sing, yeah. please? Or right, cool, you know. Take hey, Mick Jagger looks better arm. than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got one chin. Well, not really. It's yeah. kind of like rolled up. <laughs> kind of like rolled up, but. uh I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the road again. Hopefully, if you're in New York, like I said, feel free. I'm here. Um, All right. And I think a lot of people are looking forward to seeing you again. And be honest with you, man, I love interviewing people like you. This is the first time I met you, and you have such great energy, great personality. Thanks. And uh, hopefully soon, within a year or two, because of COVID, when I have my studio audience, I would love to have you and your band perform at my All show. Right. It would be great. I think it would be dope. But... Um, CJ, until then, thank you so much for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden, brother. I appreciate you. All and, right, uh, Todd. We'll talk soon, all right, man? Ramones forever. Yes, sir, Ramones forever. Have a great night and be safe, brother. All right, Todd, you too, brother. So first of all, CJ, I want to thank you for being a guest on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Uh, I knew I was going to like you off the start based on your emails and just your personality right off the bat. Such a great guy. I can definitely talk to you for a long time. And I look forward to having you back. And uh, congratulations on such a successful career with such a legendary group, and you are a part of that. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for the great punk rock music. And thank you to my live virtual audience for always tuning in to FaceTime with Todd Ward, and I hope you enjoyed that interview. So tune in tomorrow night as I'll be interviewing a legendary, world-renowned bassist, Leland Sklar, is gonna be in the house. So until then, guys, be safe, be well, and if you're not living a passionate life, then you start to live. Have a great night, everyone. Take care. He is the most interesting man in the world. I'm not always on YouTube, but when I am, I make sure I'm subscribed to FaceTime with Todd Warner. Be thirsty, my friends.